I was a child that spent a lot of time in water. I was a swimmer. I trained a lot in the pool in a country town. I swam in the beach. I pretended as a little girl that I could breathe underwater, not knowing then that there were people in the world who could with tanks. And I never had a desire to dive prior to this simply because I could snorkel and I could see the fish snorkeling and that was sufficient for me. But when that first bottle was brought up with the blueberries in it and the hand-blown bottle and how, understanding how that bottle was made just inspired me. I couldn't sit on the surface and just receive the artifacts as they came up. I really had a strong desire to learn to dive immediately. I phoned the local dive master up and said, okay, I, I need to learn. Uh, I, I need to qualify as an uh, open water diver and immediately the next day, okay, I need to know how to dive deep. This wreck site is in a beautiful position for an amateur diver as myself because it's safe. It's protected. There are not strong currents. It's not Australia. There's no sharks. They've all been eaten here. There's nothing left. And so there is nothing to fear other than my own mistakes and I'm very careful with that. I stick to my computer, I, I abide by the rules, we plan the dive, we dive the plan and it's not, it's, not a, it's not a long dive, it's a very short dive but it's a very very rewarding dive. It's a very, the first time though we were taking artifacts just you know there were bottles and artifacts just laying on the surface of this wreck. So that, when we first dived, was very easy. It was a matter of just swimming down and gently picking them up, putting them into baskets, bringing them to the surface and dealing with them once we had them on board. Now it's becoming a little bit more complicated because there's not a lot on the surface that warrants, I mean, we want to bring up as much as we can. We could take a slow dive and bring up five items. We're trying to bring up more items, as many as we can. So we're scooping in the mud now. And um, I'm enjoying it to the point of when I first dug into the mud and made this enormous cloud. If I was on the surface in an enormous cloud of, of um, mud, I would hold my breath. And I did that for a split second down there when the mud came up, you know, I blocked my nostrils and I closed my eyes. And I stopped breathing for a second. And then I actually physically started laughing, chuckling to myself. Phil asked me, were you talking to me down there? And I said, no, actually, I, I was chuckling away because I realised I could still breathe and still dig in the mud. And that was a buzz for me, that I could still keep working, even though I couldn't see anything around me, digging in the mud, putting it in the basket, bringing it up, and then finding the treasures that were in that basket afterwards. I mean, the treasure of history um, that was in that basket. So, euphoric. <laughs>